So shooters and reloaders, today let's go ahead and compare the velocity with identical loads of 22 grains of 2400 powder. We'll compare the velocities with powder coated bullets versus bullets that are tumble lubed with 45, 45, 10. These are magnum loads. So let's see what kind of difference we're getting. Going on the chronograph, starting with the 45, 45, 10 bullets to give them the best chance. Those primers are flattened out nicely and when you see the velocity you'll see that uh, that is definitely magnum performance. Now notice the old case from 1972 in the upper left. That's the one that has the lathe turned case head stamp that's been ground off. That's a bunch of brass that was purchased back in 1972. So it's been reloaded many, many, many times, including magnum loads as you see here. And that case has fired another magnum load, and you see it stood up to the magnum load just nicely. That's still a good case. 43 years old and going strong. Okay, so the non-powder coated bullets, 1527. 1468, 1467, 1504, 1548, high of 1598, I'm sorry, 1548, low of 1461, average of 1501, spread of 87, that's not going to be good standard deviation, 37. So the accuracy is not going to be as good. Well, there's the group from arrest. There's uh, six shots in there. I'm sorry, there's five shots in there. And there's the offhand group, some uh, lateral dispersion there with that full magnum. But uh, with a 1,501 feet per second average, it's going to give powder-coated bullets a run for their money for, for velocity. It's hard to see how the powder coat is going to do a whole lot better than 1501. But we shall see. Here we go. Okay, so shooters and reloaders, this powder-coated load is up against 1,500 feet per second. I don't see how these will be able to beat the 1,500 feet per second that the non-powder-coated loads got. We shall see. Here we go. Last two bullets went in the same hole. Well, let's see what that one did. Powder coated bullets look like about the same pressure. Okay, so here's what those powder-coated bullets did in terms of velocity. We got 1561, 1564, 
1583, 1523, and 1555. High of 1583, low of 1523, average 1557, extreme spread of 60, standard deviation of 21. So it's a more consistent load than the non-powder coated load. For the rest we got a one and a half inch group, not bad. And then shooting offhand, there's 12 rounds in there. And the first one was that low one. The second shot was that right one. Then the next 10 went into the group you see there at the neck. So uh, the feeling is that it shoots better than a non-powder coated load. And we're getting an extra 56 feet per second with the powder coat. So now we're gonna test the non-powder coated versus the powder coated, same load, but using the 1894 Marlin rifle. Here we go. No sense showing you shooting this at, at the uh, bench. It's not gonna be exciting. We'll just show you the results. The accuracy with the rifle shooting the powder coated bullets. That's about one and uh, an eighth inch group. Five shots. And the non-powder coated from the 1894 rifle shot four shots in there and had one flyer. Looks like that was a little bit of a a little bit of a keyhole because the uh, non-powder coated bullets are probably a little bit small for the micro groove rifling of the uh, Marlin 1894. So we had one bullet that didn't behave. But the powder coated was able to hang in there and grip that rifling perfectly. You see there's three shots on, in one hole there if you look uh, closely. So overall you have to say the powder coated bullets are going to work better in the Marlin 1894 rifle. Shot a tighter group and better stability of the bullet and a lower standard deviation by a lot, more consistent load by a lot. Now look at that in there. That is spotless. Absolutely spotless in there. And that goes for the muzzle too because when you go like this, you don't see any streaks in there. Nice and clean. I would rate this cleanup as being easy. Now if you check out the cylinder throats you'll see that they are nice and clean. Again I would rate that cleanup as being easy. We're in business. Kinda like the way the powder coated bullets worked out today and the way it cleaned up. We'll go ahead and put it back together. Now notice that screw was a little loose. It's always that way with a Super Blackhawk when you shoot mag magnum loads. Whenever you shoot magnum loads with a Ruger Super Blackhawk you can get some looseness of these screws. Now especially the one that's on, on the bottom of the receiver. These particular ones don't get loose as often and you see they're, they're snug. All clean, ready for the next range session.